Hello and welcome to a beautiful sunny day at webindingmotorcaram.com. Today we have got this Eldis NV185. Based on the AutoQuest, it is a Dolphin dealer special. Comes in at 7.33 metres in length and 2.2 metres in width. Um, as standard, it, it is a three and a half ton vehicle, 3,500 kilograms, which this one is, and has a payload before you start putting different little bits of spec of 561 kilograms. Um, first of all, it's got the black cab, silver side, it makes it look absolutely spot on. The, the standard AutoQuest uh, just comes with, um, you know, full white body. It just makes it look a really nice, sporty looking model. Uh, first of all, which we've got ahead, which I'll come back to, is the Dometic awning and TV aerial which you can see which is stood up right now which we'll show you in a second. Now I'm just going to start you with the door. Something that you do want in this sort of weather to let the air through is this fly screen. We'll keep those flies and mosquitoes out so you're all, um, all good to go. Next up we have a gas point so if you've got a barbecue, external barbecue, you just plug it and play. Um, and then it comes straight after you off your gas bottles rather than needing another fuel source to do so. Next door, next up, we have this gas locker. Now this has space for two uh, gas bottles in here. We've just got a short one just for, for running through. Um, to change this, you need your spanner. It, instead of lefty loosey, righty tighty, it's lefty tighty and righty loosey. So you put that on, on the spanner on and twist uh, accordingly. And then you've also got your knob on your top to close and open the vents. Okay, so another thing we do have on this side is the fuel cap or the diesel cap. Make sure you do put diesel and not petrol. Below that, we do have the add blue tank for the newer motorhomes or vehicles generally, the diesels, we do have to put uh, add blue in there. So don't forget about that. It will come as a warning on the dashboard. Above, we have the Dometic awning. Um, so we've got the winder which is stored in the van. It's like a T-shape on the end. And it just fits right in there. And then you twist or rotate the handle and then it will come out just like that. Once the awning's wound all the way out, you've then got the legs. Um, all you need to do is pull that back. The leg will then come out and it will twist down. And then at the bottom, you've got two holes for tent pegs and then you can ext extend the leg accordingly, depending on how, how much you want the awning out itself. At the rear of the vehicle, we do have a twin bike rack. So this folds out. Normally that is over the top just to keep it a bit more secure. But yeah, you've got rails for two bikes and then you've got straps which just hook over the bottom of the wheel and you just pull into place. Um, not much, too much else apart from that reversing camera at the top of the rear. On the driver's side of this vehicle, we'll start at the rear corner. This is where we have the cassette toilet door. Um, there is a lock on this. Um, you need to put your hand in lift up and pull this orange lever here and there's a little ledge on the back which you can uh, put your hand to rest so you to empty it you turn this tube round and undo the cap and then you just pour it out after put your chemicals in and about half a litre of water just to um, just to keep it fresh and make sure when you're in the toilet inside you close the flap because otherwise it will give you a lot of resistance and it's not something you want to be pulling on that just pushes in and that closes. Next up we've got the battery cabinet. Now this, as you can see, you've got the leisure battery on the right hand side and then we have our hook, electric hookup point um, that pulls out, just lift that flap up and then just push back in to go again. Below we have two, um, two drains. First of all we've got the fresh water drain you turn and that will empty out the fresh water and then we've got the the waste water which I'm not sure if anything will come out of this because we haven't really got much in there and that's your grey water so just again just turn that and um, something when you do winterize the vehicle you want to keep both of those flaps open 
because that's where your pipes can can burst basically when you know when water expands and so on just above we have your water filler so put your hose in there and then underneath which this motorhome does come with which i won't open because it's in the packaging still is your external shower point and that just clips on to the uh, to the connection there next up we've got the vents for the fridge and so on so make sure they're not blocked up and then some nice big windows and onto the front of the cab itself okay so at the front of this motorhome just behind the exhaust you do have the drain for the water heater itself which i'll show you more about when we get inside but yeah it's built on this beautiful black peugeot boxer two liter hdi engine uh, it's got 130 brake horsepower um, just a great great motorhome um, for driving okay so now we're in this eldis nv185 the 185 and the 285 are the eldises they are both the same layout we've got these lovely twin single beds uh, one either side they don't join up in the middle so just be aware of that it is a four berth with four belts um, underneath on your right side we have two drawers that come out sorry three drawers total um, all push button and then push back in again we've also got a 230 volt socket um, on this right hand side as well as well as heating vents and by this door we have the fuse board and trip switches so don't forget that short that little bit also under under this bed we do have the whale water pump as well above the bed we do have three cupboards on each side overhead locker should i say inside the handle there is a push button which releases the catch and then you can pull up um, just above there we do have the aerial this does unscrew and then the handle comes up and down just so you can uh, lift the the pole of the aerial up and then this twists round and that gets the aerial to stand up itself and then you've also got the aerial point in that locker as you're looking at the habitation door to the left hand side as you're walking out you do have two 230 volt sockets plus the bits for the aerial light switches and two usb ports so the control panel on the Eldis is pretty simple to be fair, uh, you've got five switches only. So first of all, bottom left hand corner we have the master switch, this turns all the lighting and power and everything in the van to on or off. You can also see the voltage at the top which is sitting just below 12 uh, volts for the leisure battery. Below that you have the light switch, again off and on water pump uh, sorry water levels so at the moment this is just over half full on the fresh water tank below that we have the off and on switch for the water pump itself and then on and off switch for the awning light on the outside below the main control panel we have the whale water and space heater control panel uh, we'll start with the water itself so we have the button on the left hand side which looks like the tap that's for the water so it's currently set to off you then press it to go to uh, which is what it last was at which was um, electric high you then got gas to light it to gas you then got gas and electric low and gas and electric high and then it'll go back to, to off and then to frost setting and electric low and then you can go all the way through the panel again next up you have the water the heater for the space heater for the van itself so to set it to a to one you've got uh, it starts it off uh, gas which is what it was last on gas and electric high and then it's electric low electric medium and electric high on the right hand side you do have uh, the up and down which sets it to the temperature or how you know hot that you want that space hot water space heater blowing through um, if there is a fault with it uh, it will come up with an explanation mark on the left hand side just there you hold the vehicle 
looking but, uh, button down and it will come up with a number or three bars, two bars, whatever. It'll, I think it's one to five that it will come up with. And then what you do is you look at your whale manual and it will tell you what the fault is. And then to clear, you press heating and up. And it will take that fault away once it's been dealt with. Okay, so at the rear of this Eldis NV185, we do have a lovely full width bathroom behind the, the single uh, beds. So starting up, we've got the, the sink with mixer tap just in front, nice bowl, and then just pull the tap away to get the water running through. Below, we have then got two cupboards of storage space for your toiletries and so on. We've got the flush button for the cassette, which you can hear just pull through. Make sure you've got your water pump on, otherwise that will not flush. You've then got a nice big wardrobe. This is your main wardrobe. Then you've got your rail above, clothes rail. Continuing down, we've got the pull cord, which uh, operates the lights, tower rail, and toilet roll holder. Now, cassette toilet itself as I said outside when emptying your cassette itself make sure this lever and the door the hatch inside the toilet is locked otherwise you won't be able to get um, that cassette out and then you've got your toilet lid and toilet seat just below just above sorry in the opposite corner we do have this nice separate shower unit as you can see there's your shower head and hose again, mix a tap and a bit of storage below. Now the door um, does just fold out, just give it a pull. There is uh, a little latch. I don't know if I can quite show you this, but I'll do it my best. There is a latch just above the, sh the, uh, the door and just make sure that's out of the way for you to be able to pull it across. And there is a light in this shower unit at the top. Kitchen itself, we've got the Daewoo microwave. We've also got two 30 volt sockets and the light switch below. Next, the microwave, we've got the storage unit and we have the control panel for the, uh, for the um, solar panel. And then this plug that's in here is for the microwave as well. Heading down, we have what we can see is a three hob burner and hot plate. Controls on the right, so the first one is for the hob and you will feel the heat coming through a few seconds later. To turn um, the gas on, you do have this igniter. You can hear it pull through. Because it's bright in here, you can't quite see it, but it is lighting. And I'll even heat the van up pretty good and quick as well. And just turn them back to turn off. Next below we have the oven grill, again by Thetford. On the right hand side we have it for, for the oven, so we'll start with the, with the left. Uh, if you pull the gas through and then press the igniter, so that is nice and lit. You'll toast your bread absolutely beautifully. So I'll turn that off. Then below now this takes a little bit less effort because the igniter is right next to the switch. You turn the knob, it is one to nine, it's not temperature, uh, temperature set. Press the ignition and you can see the burners at the rear just light up. And then just turn to the off button, to the zero, just to uh, turn it off. You've then got some nice drawers again push button to get in ideal for cutlery and then we have this three-way dometic fridge now it's three-way because uh, you've got three settings you've got gas uh, vehicle battery and 
uh, mains electric. So starting off with gas uh, pointing down, what you need to do is press the left hand dial and then press the igniter next to it at the same time and then it'll, it'll flame up, it'll click into place and then the red needle that you can see going across into the green once that's in the green that means it is lit on gas. And then the other fuel sources we see are the vehicle battery. Now the vehicle or the engine does have to be running for this to operate because it draws a lot of power, the fridge does. And then if we click it across one, we have the mains or plug-in uh, to operate the fridge. So when you are plugged in on site and then just at the top uh, to turn the fridge off, just make sure you leave a bit of a gap when you're not using the fridge just so you don't uh, let it get too smelly when it's all closed up. Uh, in the cupboard below the oven you've got three knobs, uh, these are the gas knobs for the oven, fridge and grills. These are currently in the on position when the horizontal. And then we have the uh, vents for the, for the blown air system. Okay, so in the lounge of this motorhome as you can see, as a, um, it is the bench seat. Um, I prefer these to the half dinette, especially with the belts, uh, the belt and seats underneath, just because you've just got a bit more space. And when you get the L-shaped seat in, you do tend to, it does, it's a bit of wasted space when you're lounging because there's a big corner of it that you can't actually use. So this does turn to a double bed as well. You've got two handle spaces on each side and you just pull over the carpet and the same with the other side and that meets in the middle pull the cushions down and the back rests as well and then that just forms uh, this full bed um, at the front and that's how you you make it a four berth. Also above this area we do have a little bit of storage pockets above and we've also got uh, two lockers to either side of the lounge area. Okay so something Eldis does really well and they do promise this for every berth there is in the motorhome they will have the same amount of belted seats. So these seats, as you can just about see, are underneath the bench seat. So you have got that nice lounge area where you can um, space out without having the L-shaped seat in, which does get a bit tight sometimes. So take all the cushions off. This is on gas struts, as you can hear, as it loads to the top. You then want to push it back ever so slightly. And then there's two metal rods inside the white, and that folds down and clips into place. Next up, you've got two more bars here. They're both push downs. The first one puts the bench or the, 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 uh, the backrest up, and then the second one just lifts it into position. Again, just straighten this, out, this part out. And then that then just locks into place. And then you've got your seat belt, which comes in into here. And then the same sort of thing on the way down push the bottom down, then the next one, and it'll all fold back neatly in under, underneath the seat. You do, a little, you do lose a bit of storage, but what a great way to, uh, to make that lounge usable again. Underneath the seat and um, behind the driver's side, we do have two uh, knobs that I wanna show you. First of all is the gas for the water heater, and then behind that we have a yellow lever as well and turning it to the right just opens up the water heater. So in those winter months, as well as the, uh, the fresh and the waste water, you have those tanks emptied uh, so you don't burst any pipes. So to operate the windows on this, um, we've got four latches for the bigger ones. So they just fold up. You have got an in inside latch if you just want a little bit of a gap and then you push it into place. And then I don't know if you can see, there is a, a little turn knob there on both sides it sort of like screws into place is the best way to put it and that'll hold the window there uh, just above then we have a fly screen that comes down so you do still get that fresh air coming through and if you want to uh, to darken it out you have the blind and they just uh, they just click into place okay so for the smaller skylights you have this bar that goes across it is on like a, a ratchet uh, system. You pull the bar down and then slide towards the front of the vehicle and the same 
for closing it, you pull down and slide towards the back. Now, if I go on to the next one, um, this is just like the side windows. You've got a bar that comes out, pulls down, it's on gas struts, the bar goes back up, and then the side catcher is put into place. Again, you can leave this open slightly. Just make sure you do close these when you're traveling because that's how you lose a skylight. Okay, so when it comes to driving the motorhome, it is on the Peugeot Boxer uh, chassis cab. Starting with near the window itself, as you can see the top left, you do have the speakers. And then right at the center at the bottom near the window itself is the electric window and mirror operation. That does do both parts of the mirrors. It does the, the, the top half and the bottom half. Moving to the steering wheel, we do have controls on there for the Bluetooth settings and phone prep. On the, the right hand stalk it does operate uh, the windscreen and washers. The bottom left hand stalk is the cruise control and speed limiter function. And then we have the lights and indicators on the left. It is on the six speed gearbox and we do have cab air conditioning. And then we've also got the radio and media system in the center. Something I do like about the new cabs, we do have USB ports uh, just below the cup holder, as well as another one below, as well as uh, uh, with the auxiliary point and even more cup holders. And then really just to finish off, we've got driver and passenger airbag and then above in the rear view mirror is the reversing camera. Now this doesn't have cab blinds, but it does have cab curtains. So these go all the way around on rails, which shuts out the light that's coming through the cab. Okay, so to finish this vehicle off, we do have this table in the cupboard. Again, another push button um, cupboard by the habitation door. The legs pull out and then you press this bar when you want them to come back in again. Uh, there is a latch just to keep that in place. Also in this area we do have, again, a little safety catch and this blind does come all the way across just to separate the front bedroom to the back bedroom and the kitchen and everything like that. And then just button that back in. So yeah, great motorhome, four berth motorhome, four belted seats. Uh, when you don't use it in the winter months, make sure you drain all the tanks, pull all the taps up, get the shower um, cord and just hang that down again with everything turned, turned on. Um, equally keep it turned on in the hot position just to make sure you, you drain those tanks out um, and then open all the, all the valves up just so it all drains out nicely. If you've got any questions on this motorhome, please get in touch by calling 01283 240 237 or comment below. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Please press subscribe at the bottom or like if you're on our Facebook and watch the latest news and motorhome reviews. Find out more information, you can go on our website, www.webuyanymotorcaravan.com. Telephone us on 01283 240 237.